It's just really wrapping everything else together, what you already learned. I spend a lot of time just kind of showing you guys um, what exactly to do, but with evaluating the angles. But then what this, what the problem like this does is it kind of brings everything together that you've learned. So what it does is ask us to solve 4x on the interval of 0 and 2 pi. So it asks us to solve. And guys, we go back through this, and I'm trying to you know, make you guys really understand that. When solving, we've only worked on two different ways to solve. Either you isolate a single variable by using inverse operations, like you learned in Algebra 1, like do inverse operations, get a variable isolated, or your trigonometric function isolated, and then you can evaluate. Or we learn how to factor and, and apply the zero product property. Those are really our two basic ways that we learn to solve. And we look at here right now, we can't combine these terms, right? They're not the same function. Um, it's going to be pretty difficult looking into trying to factor something else out so we could apply the zero product property. So right now, we're kind of stuck. There's no immediate like, oh, sine equals this, or you know, we can't factor and combine like terms. So what I ask you to look at is, well, oh, we have the sine of x divided by 2. Now, we, I gave you guys those little half sheet of formulas that you guys can apply, right? So can we now rewrite what the square or the x is um, x divided by 2? We're going to be, can we, pl can we plug that formula in for it? Yeah, why not? So that's going to be, if my memory serves me correct, the square root of 1 plus cosine of x divided by 2, okay, minus sine of x equals 0. Okay, so this one gets me all the time. And let's say I wanted to solve an equation, square root of x plus 3 equals 6. All right. Does anybody know what, what do we do on a problem like this? When we want to solve, we've got to undo that square root, right? But the main important thing is you have to isolate, because the un, uh, first thing, you have to isolate this variable. So we subtract the 3, and you get the square root of x equals um, 3. Now, how do you undo the square root? Square, all right? But the main important thing that you guys have to understand is you can't undo the squaring unless you isolate it. Because if you just go through this, if you say, oh, well, um, let's just square both sides. Well, if you're going to square this, this isn't the square root. Uh, this isn't x plus 9. Remember, this is going to be square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 3. And you're going to get a lot more work than you probably need to. Okay, So isolate your square root, and then you can undo it. Then you can square both sides. So we have a square root that we need to isolate. right? We need to isolate the square root before we square it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the sine of x to the other side. So therefore, I have plus or minus the square root of 1 plus Cosine of x divided by 2 equals sine of x. Now that I have this isolated, I can square both sides. right? So if I take the square root and square something, those are inverse operations, right? Correct? So they undo each other. So therefore, I'm just going to be left with 1 plus cosine of x divided by 2 equals sine squared of x. Follow me so far? Okay, now we still need to, like I said, get something in the same form. Well, I know sine squared. We, I want to either use sines or cosines. I don't really like using both of them. So unless I can maybe factor it in a way. But here, I can rewrite this as 1 minus cosine squared, right? Yes. And then what also I can do, actually, is first, let's get the 2 off the bottom. Let's not deal with fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Those divide to 1. So I'm left with 1 plus cosine of x equals 2 sine squared of x. Well, I told you, I'm going to continue this problem up here, 1 plus cosine of x equals 2 times 1 minus cosine squared of x. That's by using your Pythagorean identity, distributive property. So now I'm left with 1 plus cosine of x equals 2 minus 2 cosine squared of x. All right? Everybody following me so far? OK, so now our main goal, guys, is when you have a problem like this, now we've done all this. We got rid of the square root. We got rid of the rational term. Now 
to solve, we got to get all of our variables on the same side, right? So let's add a 2 cosine squared of x onto both sides, and let's subtract a 2 on both sides. Therefore, I'm now left with, in standard form, 2 cosine squared of x plus cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Now I have a problem. I still can't isolate it, but can I use factoring to help me solve this? Yeah. So by factoring my forms, I could say 2 cosine, 2 cosine of x, and let's do plus 1 times cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Now, since we factored it, we have a product. So now we can use the zero product property. 2 cosine of x, sorry, x is plus 1 equals 0. And cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Now, by solving, I get cosine of x equals negative 1 half. And I get cosine of x equals positive 1. Whew, right? Then we go to our unit circle and we say, when does the cosine of x equal negative 1 half? Well, there and there. So we need to figure out what those two angles are. So we could say x equals 2 pi over 3, because this is pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 3 pi thirds, and this would be 4 pi thirds. And then x equals 4 pi thirds. And then when does cosine of x equal 1? At pi. So those are going to be all your solutions when the cosine, no, I'm sorry, what am I doing? That's negative. Thank you. Cosine, no, it is. Yeah, that's what we want. Cosine of negative 1 half. We want negative 1 half. That was right. I don't know if I made a mistake. What? Huh? OK. Well, cosine of pi is right here. Oh, OK, so we're going to use 0. Well, the problem is. 2 pi is not included in my solution set. So the, only, the angle that's included in my solution set is going to be 0. So I'd be 0 for that. Right? And then I factored it. For some reason, I remember thinking I got something different on my cosine of x. Wait a minute. That's wrong. Guys. This should be plus 1, and this should be minus 1. You guys are making me doing this. You guys make me doing the math wrong. That's minus 1, that's plus 1. You guys see that? Factoring, I factored it wrong. That's minus 1, that's plus 1. Therefore, cosine x equals negative 1, therefore it's pi, and therefore this is pi equals. I knew I did something wrong, because I remember doing this problem before. So therefore, cosine of x, yes? Is there something else? OK. So cosine of x equals 1 half. And therefore, I'm going to have these two angles, which is going to be 5 pi over 3, or pi over 3, and then 5 pi over 3. 